Hey, KerryKH here. On YouTube, there are a lot of video genres where spoken monologue with no real life footage works really well. We're talking video essays, tutorials, rants, and so on. The only problem is, lots of these video creators have an audio file of their voice saying the monologue, but they don't need or want to produce all the visuals to accompany that audio. And I don't blame them. I mean, animating 10 minutes of visuals can take several weeks. So instead, I see a lot of people essentially putting a slideshow of stock images for whatever sentence they're saying at the time. I think this makes sense because it's efficient, more entertaining to watch than a blank screen, and can even help you convey what you want to say more clearly. But on that first point, is it actually efficient? Because having done this myself, I know that what you typically do is just search the phrase you just said on Google, download one of the top image results, and plop that into your video at the timestamp you said that phrase. Rinse and repeat a hundred times. That seems kind of tedious to me, and anything tedious should be replaced by a computer. So this was my most recent project, automatically creating Google image slideshows to accompany monologue. Ideally, we should have a program that you only have to run once and boom, the video's done. The main goal for this project is improving efficiency, so let's see how that might work. As inputs for this giant machine, I'm going to feed in an annotated transcript and an audio file of me reading that transcript. For example, let's say we have this test transcript and this test audio file. Why don't we listen to that audio file right now? This is a test. When I talk about dogs, does the video show pictures of dogs and not cats? If it does, then I will celebrate. You get the idea. Now in this case, I've already manually edited that audio. You can use my jump cutter tool from last year to automate this step, but to be honest, audio editing is only 5% of my workflow, so I didn't mind just doing it myself. If you look at my annotated transcript though, you'll notice I used a lot of weird punctuation. Well, I used slashes to represent line breaks, and I used square brackets to depict the topic of what I'm talking about for each line. Unless the topic was the entire line, in which case I didn't need to do anything. Finally, double line breaks indicate an end to a paragraph, which means the final video should somehow depict that the subject material is moving in a different direction. Okay, so that's all cool, but what can the computer do with all this info? Well, the first component in our machine is the Google Image Searcher. I wrote a Python script that detects all the topics in the transcript, uses Google's API to collect the top five image results for those topics, and then randomly saves one of them to my hard drive. Then we have the second component, which removes all the annoying annotations to produce a clean script, which we then feed into our third component, Gentle. If you remember from my lip reading AI demonstration, Gentle is a robust yet lenient forced aligner built on Caldi by lower quality. But what the heck does that mean? What that means is, if we give it both the cleaned script and my audio file, it can tell me the timestamps for when I said every word of the transcript. Because my voice is really weird, it sometimes messes up, but it's not often enough to cause problems, and it's actually robust enough to work on over an hour of me saying the B-movie script, so I'm sure it's fine. But now it's time to move on to component 4. We can combine these word timestamps with the topic list from earlier to create a timetable for when each topic is being talked about. We're really in the home stretch now! In component 5, I wrote a Python script that can read this timetable. Using the Google image files collected way back in step 1, it can generate a frame sequence where each frame will become part of the final video. It's important that these frames show the relevant topic images exactly when I'm talking about them. So keeping a close eye on things like frame rate and sample rate is crucial here. Now based on the video format I had in my head before I started all this, the code has to show multiple captioned images on the screen at once. It also has to interpolate smoothly between them, so I'm thinking cosine interpolation. And yes, I used Pygame to draw all these frames. Stop roasting me for that. All roasts of KerryKH for using Pygame must cease as soon as this video is uploaded, got that? 
Finally, Component 6 uses FFmpeg to convert this frame sequence into a video. Then it's gonna attach the original audio file to that video, which should synchronize perfectly if everything's gone according to plan. Then it deletes a lot of the junk produced by all the previous components and delivers the polished video to you, the user. So this is the final flowchart of how this program works. I didn't expect it to get so complicated, but it gets the job done. If we box all of this up into a handy dandy black box, then you can essentially press one button to go from transcript and audio file to finished video with no human work required. So that's a pretty fun concept in theory, but does it work in practice? I mean, at first it didn't. I ran into so many bugs trying to download CUDA and Gentle that I had to call my friends like Hans for help. It was a tragic time. But after a couple days of coding, let's see what this video making machine was able to produce on that example transcript from earlier. Take a look at the transcript. You don't need to read the whole thing, but try to get an idea of what we are looking for. Ready? Okay, now let's see what the video making machine gives us. This is a test. When I talk about dogs, does the video show pictures of dogs and not cats? If it does, then I will celebrate. Does this double line break cause the images to go in a different direction? If so, then everything is working according to plan. As a final test, I want to see if word clustering works. I could be thinking of five separate words. The Great Wall of China or perhaps I'm thinking of the singular concept of the Great Wall of China. Did you see two different sets of images? If so, then my code is working properly. The demonstration is complete. Goodbye. So if I'm being honest, I'm pretty pleased with the results because it checks all the boxes I had originally wanted. Now, the initial goal of this project was efficiency, but two days of coding to produce a 40 second video may not seem very efficient. However, consider that every future video made with this tool takes maybe five clicks to make, plus some minor bug fixes, so it's gonna be a lot faster. If I were to start making hour-long video essays, I'd definitely use this tool to cut down on production time by at least 50%. Lazy? Kinda. Hey, but people have done much lazier things and gotten away with it. Enough about video essays though, am I gonna use this tool on Carrie KH videos, which are more computer science projects? To be honest, probably not. I mean, it's lazy, it's uninspired, and you guys came here to see inspired videos, so I'm gonna- Aren't you using it right now? What? Aren't you using it right now? Demi Pixel, what are you doing here? Last video, you had a reason to be here because you helped me produce the meme history video, but this time you're not needed. <sighs> Fine, I'll go. Good, no more intruders. But now I'm here. Yuri, you're here too? But in all seriousness, if there's ever a necessary passage that I need to say in a Carrie KH video, but I can't think of what to animate for it, I might just resort to this. I mean, this takes animating a 10 minute video go from taking over a week to just taking a couple hours of my computer's time, not mine. Also, you should definitely check out Demipixel's SoundCloud, because he's made background music for my evolution simulators and COVID-19 livestreams. You should also unsubscribe from Yuri Ganjero, I mean, why haven't you already? So you might be wondering, Carrie, if you're so opposed to making your own animations or visuals for your video, why not skip this Google image thing entirely and go with the simplest approach, which is to record your face like I'm doing right now? Well, long story short, I've already done that, so here's a vlog of me talking to the camera. Hi, um, I just uploaded the- So, not many people watch these, and it could be because I'm uploading it to a smaller channel, but it could also be because when I'm recording my face, I'm no different from thousands of other YouTubers who also do that, so watching my video no longer becomes unique. I think having the animations or the Google image slideshow in a way makes me at least distinct from people just recording in their mobile phones. So that being said, you probably won't see a view like this in many other Carrie KH videos, because as this whole video is about, I've made something better. Okay, that's all I've got for this video. In a future video, I'll try to use Gentle's phoneme timings to lip sync the mouth of my stick figure character guy, so he's coming back too. See you next time. Oh, before I go, because you viewers have been so awesome, I think I'll let you in on another secret.